Hello everyone. My name is Karen Gall and I'm so pleased to be here today to share some of the Jewish traditions during this celebration of Alberta Culture Day's multiculturalism under the mid-autumn moon. Like many other cultures and religions, the Jewish faith has a calendar that is based on the phases of the moon. When there is a new moon, a new month begins. We have several autumnal holidays that lead one into the next, but because there are so many elements, themes, and traditions involved in each of these special days, I can only give you a little taste of each of them today. Rosh Hashanah begins at sundown this Friday evening, September 18. Rosh Hashanah literally means head of the year. It is the first of our autumn holy days and festivals and begins the 10 days of awe, marking the time from the beginning of the new year to the end of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. It is a time for serious reflection about the year that has passed and the promise to live a better life that we bring into the new year. Yom Kippur is a day of 25 hours of fasting and prayer. We say that on Rosh Hashanah, the Book of Life is opened, and at the end of Yom Kippur, the book is closed. We greet people with the wish that their names be written in the Book of Life for a good and prosperous year. A few days after Yom Kippur is over, we celebrate Sukkot. Essentially, Sukkot is the Biblical Harvest Festival, when we celebrate the success of the summer's crops, show gratitude for the bountiful harvest, and share the abundance with family and friends. Essentially, it's the Jewish Thanksgiving. At the end of the eight-day festival of Sukkot, we celebrate Simchat Torah, rejoicing the Torah. We finish the annual cycle of reading the Torah, the five books of Moses, and we immediately rewind the scroll to begin and start again at Bereshit, Genesis. This concept of continuity of life, learning, turning, returning, and renewal is reflected even in the food we eat during the High Holy Days and Autumn Festivals. Our usual braided bread, the challah, is shaped in a circle like a crown representing God's unending sovereignty, or like a spiral representing the unending spiral of time. We bake apple cakes and honey cakes, and we dip apples and bread in honey to welcome in a sweet new year. In order to share some of these traditions with you today, I'm going to demonstrate how to make my favorite honey cake, and also how to braid and shape the round challah that we enjoy during all of our autumn holy days and festivals. Shana Tova Umetuka, may you have a good and sweet year. Shana Tova everyone, Happy New Year. As I explained in my video, the Jewish New Year is starting on Friday evening this week um, and I'm going to demonstrate how I make a honey cake. Now, in order to wish everyone Shana Tova Umetuka, a good year and a sweet year, we tend to include sweet things in our, uh, in our food choices. And so that includes having apples and honey, apple cake, uh, challah with raisins in it, and honey cake. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate. The recipe that I'm using comes from Noreen Gillitz's Food Processor Bible, which makes it really easy to make. So we'll start with two and a half cups of flour. Into the food processor with one teaspoon baking soda, two teaspoons of baking powder and two teaspoons of cinnamon. All right, let's turn this machine on for 10. 
10 seconds. The next step is to process three quarters of a cup of brown sugar with three eggs. And the recipe does say that you could use two eggs and two egg yolks if you want to lighten it somewhat. The instructions say process for 30 seconds with the pusher tube out. All right, now time to add some more ingredients. Now we add honey and oil and process for one and a half minutes. So first I, okay, all right, one cup of liquid honey and three quarters of a cup of oil. I measured the oil in here first, then I added the honey, and you'll see how easily the honey comes out. It doesn't stick at all. If you either spray your, your measuring cup first or just put the oil in first, and it should all come out just beautifully. Here it comes, but I could help it now. There we go. Now this will be for one and a half minutes. ingredient is a half a cup of cola so uh, and you can use diet cola which is what's in this cup you can use coffee you could use tea or you could use orange juice and just pour it on on top of the dry ingredients now you process with four or five pulses you don't want to process it just, you don't want to just press on because then your batter will end up too tough. You'll work up too much gluten and your cake won't be as fluffy. So, one, two, three, four, five. And have a look. And it looks like it's completely, completely blended. Do not over process. See, I followed instructions. Okay, immediately remove processor from the base. I'm going to give it just a little bit of a stir to get this the top flour mixed in. There you go. And immediately pour into a prepared pan. And I'm using a bunt pan that I've sprayed with the Pam baking spray. So that has both oil and flour in it. In it goes. This is one of the easiest honey cake recipes that I have found, and it turns out just delicious. oven it goes for one hour until the cake tests done then you let it cool for 20 minutes and then remove it from the pan and here we go into the oven I have preheated the oven to 320 degrees Fahrenheit in you go honey cake and we'll see you I'll check you in about 50 minutes all right the honey cake has been in the oven for one hour 
Let's test to see if it's done with a skewer. Perfect. So I'll bring it out of the oven and put it on a rack to cool for 20 minutes. All right, everyone, this is what we've been waiting for. Noreen Gillitz's Honey Cola Cake for Rosh Hashanah is finished baking. It's cooled in the pan for, oh, about 20, 30 minutes. And let's watch the magic. Oh, I heard it go thump. That's good. There you go. And just adjust it a little bit. And then top it off with a little bit of powdered sugar on the top. Looks like snow. We don't want snow. We just want our fall holiday. There we go. And Shana Tova Umetuka. Happy and sweet new year to everyone. So, I made my father dough earlier and it has risen and I am going to punch it down. And there it goes. That's a beautiful rise. I'm going to make two different shapes. And I'll turn it out onto the table and cut it in half and then I'll be able to make the different shapes. I'm going to roll this into a long snake and then I'll flatten it out and add some raisins. This is going to be a raisin challah. Okay, let's see about this. All right. Here we go. This is a good idea. I need to pinch it to seal it. Pinch. I have a nine inch pan here that I've sprayed with Pam for baking. And I've got a piece of parchment paper in the bottom because parchment ma paper makes everything easier. All right, so I'm going to start to coil this around and around and try to build it up. Oh, maybe I should switch this to a smaller pan. And let's see if we can make this crown like. Aha. Welcome back. We're going to paint the challah with an egg wash and sprinkle it with seeds or sugar. So I have in this bowl one egg and about a teaspoon-ish of, of water and I'm feeding them together. Then I use a brush to paint the bread and get in all the nooks and crannies um, all the way around. And you can see this one has, they both have doubled in size from where I had them before, how they were before, and they're going to rise even more when they're in the oven. Well, the challah is done, or chalot. The two of them are done. This one is full of raisins. This one's full of apples. And I'll put them on the table here with our honey cake and our apples from our apple tree and honey for a sweet, wonderful new year.